You guys have any questions before we move on? Anything you want to chat about? No, we good? Yes, sir? That's an interesting question. What do you mean by that? If I well, like, there are like white people that have like been disenfranchised like recently, like by Re the recently is the key. Uh, recently is the well, key. The country like deindustrialized, right? So like a lot of people in like manufacturing jobs and stuff like right. Were but so 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 to your question, to your question, I think you have to understand what the word reparations means first. So reparations, you are repairing something that you have broken. You are paying for something that you were supposed to pay for. I'm not saying that there aren't people living in America today who are suffering and are going through pain and strife because of what's happening when it comes to um, you know, the machines taking jobs, uh, factories becoming industrialized, etc. But reparations is a specific conversation about a specific time in America, and that is black people were slaves. You know what I mean? It, I've even heard people say like, oh, but there were some of the Irish who were indentured. Like, yeah, let's slavery. Look at the numbers, look at the time, look at the level of work. You could not work toward your freedom. For most black people in America, this was a time when you were, that was it. You lived and died as a slave. And so that's what reparations is about. And so I hear what you're saying, but I think that's a completely separate conversation that needs to be had about the now. Because if you, if you are not careful, what you then do is you combine everybody's suffering into the same ball and you make it seem like all injustices have the same weighting. And they don't, just like crimes. You know, theft isn't the same as murder. We don't try them the same way. And as much as there is a white person who's suffering today, I feel for anybody who's suffering because I know what it's like to be poor. I know what it's like to suffer. I didn't come from a wealthy family. We struggled when I was growing up. But I also understand that there are levels of that suffering. You know, and so sometimes white people, it, it, does, it does block a white person because you go white privilege and a person goes, I'm poor and I'm white, where's the privilege? You know, white people are like, I wish I could activate my white privilege. I wish I could do it right now. White privilege, give me something. <laughs> I, I get that, I get that, trust me, I get it. It is hard to accept that you have benefits because of the color of your skin if you cannot see the benefits that you have. But the thing I try to explain to a person is, think of it more like golf. Don't think of it as privilege, then think of it like a handicap. Right? In golf, they acknowledge that you are in a position where you need so many advantages to be competitive in the game. Right? So what they say is you have a handicap of 15, so that means like you're going to be hitting from this tee and you get more chances to get the ball in because we understand the position you're in. And if you're a black person in America, from slavery, from day one, the number of injustices that have held black people back in America amount to an insurmountable, like you, you, look at, you look at black people's freedom, you look at black people's land, just, just land alone. The amount of wealth you can, you can acquire over time if you own land is exponential because you have the land, you have the fact that you can borrow based on the land, you have the fact that you can use the money that you have borrowed to grow more wealth, you can use it to grow your family's wealth. Just taking that away from black people alone is crippling them. And so you combine that with slavery and then you look at Jim Crow laws. You didn't let black people in America live in the areas that they wanted to live in. They couldn't get loans from the banks that they wanted to get loans from. And then on top of that, when they started getting the loans from American banks, American banks were found to be giving them higher interest rates when in fact they were the same risk as many of the other races that they were, they were, they were giving loans to. So when you combine all of those things, I think it's safe to say that black Americans have a conversation that they need to be having with the United States. Doesn't involve me, doesn't involve white people, doesn't, it's like, it's like, yo, American government, meet the black people. That's it. Have that conversation. <laughs>